I was a guest on a podcast and the host asked me the way he said it was, he said, everybody at work should be positive. And if they're not positive, you should fire them. And I said, wait, 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 wait a minute. I think what we're talking about here is negativity that comes from the ego, fear, trying to protect what we don't want in the workplace and in our organizations and with our teams is ego induced drama. But my tip is do not tolerate fake positivity. Do not create your leadership team in a way that they are not comfortable sharing information with you because you've created this culture or this environment that you only want to hear the good stuff. Hey everyone, it's Amy Lynn Durham and you're listening to Create Magic at Work. Create Magic at Work is on a mission to equip senior leaders with tools they need to be a true quantum leader and actually understand what that means. Improve employee engagement, retain top talent, and transform your workplace culture to have less drama and stress. So let's start making magic. Hey everyone, welcome to season four of the Create Magic at Work podcast. I wanted to come on and just share some tips and some knowledge that maybe you can take with you for the week and go back and listen to again. There's so much going on in the consciousness of the workplace right now. We are coming back and dealing with kind of a pandemic fatigue hangover We're, as leaders in the workplace. We have rising inflation now in it all over LinkedIn, the topic is quiet quitting, quiet promoting. And then all of a sudden there's these huge tech companies that have had massive layoffs. All of these things can really cause a stressful work environment, obviously. And I have found in my leadership journey, my former corporate executive job at the time I was managing over 400 employees. I've dealt with mass layoffs before crisis management, all of those things. And what I have found is that the burden falls on leadership to manage these stresses with their teams. They're often scrambling while the dust settles with a shakeup like this or anything that occurs in the workplace. And the leaders that are still there really have to step up and help lead by example how they want to be moving forward. I want to talk about how you can be a leader who maintains a calming and healing presence, even under times of great stress. That is a skill in spiritual intelligence that I coach my one-on-one -on -one clients on in my private coaching program. And this takes them to a space where they are not leading from their ego, but they're leading from that calm, inner compassion and inner wisdom person that they really want to be. And they're not diving into the negativity and the fear and they're stepping up and leading others to rise up to that higher energy level as well. So what does that look like? And what can that look like for you? I'm going to give you three things that I want you to take with you for the week or for your life, really <laughs> for the rest of your life, really. Okay. So I've talked about this before, but this is a big deal when you are trying to maintain inner peace and outer peace as a high level leader during stressful times. The first thing is to do an inner check and make sure that you are able to be present at a high level. Stephen Covey in the nineties, he termed, he coined the phrase, listen to understand, don't listen to respond. That was great. However, when we are in a leadership role, oftentimes we are listening to fix, listening to fix, right? We were put in this role because we are expected to know everything. We are expected to fix issues that might arise. We are expected to know all of the answers, etc. So take a step back. You don't have to fix everything right now and truly be present at a high level. What does that mean? That means if someone is sharing with you their experience, something that's sensitive, if they're being vulnerable and disclosing something to you in the workplace that you need to handle as their leader, you don't have to do something about it right away. You can listen to bear witness, listen 
to silently acknowledge that the other person's experience truly exists for them. And by doing this, you're helping that person feel seen and validated. So when you practice this, it allows you to quiet that inner turmoil that makes you feel as if you have to fix something and jump to a solution at that moment, which by the way, is another really deep coaching skill that I coach my clients on, which is if you want to be a wise and effective change agent, if you want to be a high level leader, you cannot jump to quick fixes. There'll be time for that later. So first be present at a high level, listen to bear witness, help the person feel seen and validated. Okay. Second practice detachment. One of the definitions of detachment is a permanently organized separate unit. So if you're practicing presence at a high level, which is number one, now, and you're practicing detachment at the same time, you can try to view yourself as a separate unit from what's going on around you. You don't have to take on the problems of others as your own in order to solve them right then. You don't have to force solutions onto problems, which sometimes creates more problems. By the way, a lot of us do that in our personal lives too and in our personal relationships and, and allowing people the freedom to be as they are is something that you should do in that moment. If you rigidly impose your idea of how things should be onto others, you could receive a heightened resistance rather than a solution. The person might feel like you're forcing them to accept your way of thinking, believing, and doing things. So that's the second piece to take with you. Practice detachment. Just because your path as a leader and what has worked for you in the past does not mean that those exact same steps are going to work for someone else. So celebrate the different pathways that people take in order to get the results that you need. And the results that you need could just be, there's a lot of chaos going on right now. Where can we look for the innovation in the chaos? Where can we look for the learning moments in the chaos? And how can we take that forward to be the best leaders we can be? Try this new way of leading when you don't impose your views rigidly in order to force outcomes. And imagine what can happen from that. Imagine the possibilities that you can't conceive because you're allowing space for innovation and creation. That is how to be a wise and effective change agent. That is how to make wise and compassionate decisions. All spiritual intelligence skills go beyond EQ, level up, detach from outcomes and know that there's no way possible that you could conceive what end results can truly be ever. So that's number two, practicing detachment. Third one, this is a big one. Do not tolerate fake positivity. I was a guest on a podcast a few months ago and the host asked me the way he said it was, he said, everybody at work should be positive. And if they're not positive, you should fire them. <laughs> and I, and he, he referenced some high level leaders like Grant Cardone and some other people. And he was saying that th those particular leaders don't tolerate negativity in their workspace. And if there's any negativity that arises, then they just get rid of the people that are being negative. And I said, wait, 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 wait a minute. I think what we're talking about here is negativity that comes from the ego, fear, trying to protect what we don't want in the workplace and in our organizations and with our teams is ego induced drama. But my tip is do not tolerate fake positivity. Do not create your leadership team in a way that they are not comfortable sharing information with you because you've created this culture or this environment that you only want to hear the good stuff. I have seen leaders surround themselves with people that only tell them what they want to hear. And unfortunately, that leaves a lot on the table for growth for your company and your culture, right? Have you ever heard of companies terminating employees for being negative or having bad attitudes? I've seen it and I've seen it done in a way where, I mean, you can't put on the HR paperwork, we're firing you for having a bad attitude. <laughs> but there is a way, I wonder if that's, it's quiet quitting, quiet promoting. And I think there's a third one, quiet firing <laughs> that is out on LinkedIn right now. And that's like secretly weeding somebody out of your team because 
you're looking for a way that you can get rid of them through HR because they have, they're negative and they have a bad attitude. So my question for you would be, are they toxic? Are they negative? Do they have a bad attitude and is it ego induced? Or are they voicing serious concerns that you might need to address as their leader? And that takes a high level leader to discern between the two and to actually want to address someone's grievances that might be going on instead of just getting rid of it and keeping it moving because you have your numbers to hit. So I completely understand the ramification of someone's fear, anger, apathy, all of that bringing the energy of a team down. At the same time, it's extremely important that you don't promote toxic or fake positivity in the workplace. When leaders create an atmosphere where they are dismissive of negative emotions, it creates an environment where people feel dismissed and it causes a lack of rapport. If you lose rapport with your team, productivity and engagement will decline. If you only surround yourself, like I said before, with people who tell you what you wanna hear, you cut yourself off from valuable critical feedback that can move you and your team forward in a significant way. And remember, ultimately what you want what you don't want <laughs> is you don't want ego-induced drama, but you do not tolerate fake positivity. That will set you back years as far as advancements with where you need to go. So those are my three tips for you. Practice presence at a high level. Listen to bear witness. Take it a step further than listening to understand. Help the person feel seen and validated. This will quiet the inner turmoil within yourself of feeling like you need to fix or do something or have a solution right away. So that moves to number two, practicing detachment. View yourself as a separate unit from what's going on around you. You don't have to take on the problems of others as your own in order to solve them. And don't force solutions on onto problems and create more problems. And finally, do not tolerate fake positivity. If you find yourself leaning more towards the people that you like what they're saying, rather than clear critical feedback, it's time to take a look in the mirror and maybe meet with some individuals you haven't spoken with in a while and get their feedback and really follow your intuition. Is this ego induced drama or is this someone that's really giving me great feedback and on how we can move the company forward and what we can do to make this workplace healthy. And then finally, of course, the bonus ap approach my 3.5, the bonus approach is to get support. So if you want to learn more about any of these things and have fun while doing it, I have my one-on-one -on -one private coaching program that I invite you into, and you can explore these integral leadership skills. And I meet you specifically where you are in your journey and take you further. I can help you become a leader who's truly a calming and healing presence, who's truly a wise and effective change agent, yeah, I also teach these skills in, to companies in workshops and training, and the transformation is amazing to see. So thank you for tuning in to the first episode of season four of the Create Magic at Work podcast. I'm really excited for what's to come this season. The podcast was on a pause for a couple of months, and I have some really amazing guests coming forward in this season that I think will really bring some magic to you. Have a great week. Hi everyone, Amy Lynn Durham here. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. All the show notes and links can be found at createmagicatwork.net or you can just look in the show notes in the episode and they're right there for you. Come back each week and make sure you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Keep joining us for more exciting episodes where we help you transform workplace culture to leaders that create less drama and stress and have high productivity and profitability. You have the power to create a burnout-free workplace right now. You can gain access to my new course, Create a Burnout-Free Team and Workplace, where you'll receive step-by-step -step tutorials in creating a team and organization that thrives. Click the link in the show notes to join us. I hope we brought a little magic to your day. Sending magic to everyone, and see you next time.